my name is Eva, and yes, I am dressed up as Chibi Moon because today we're talking about Halloween and all the sexiness that comes along with it. I'm gonna take off my gloves and maybe we can get rid of this guy too. So, if you might have noticed perusing any retailer looking for Halloween costumes that you wonder why not everybody wakes up with a cold on November 1st, Halloween has gotten very sexy. But has it always been this hyper-sexualized? So it's speculated that Halloween's scandalous beginnings were in New York at the height of the sexual revolution in 1973. So there was a big parade in New York's Greenwich Village where people donned outlandish costumes and drank lots of alcohol might remind you of what we think of today's Halloween. And New York being the hip place that it is, other cities began to replicate similar events. However, what we see now as like everywhere has sexy Halloween costumes didn't really begin until the early 2000s. Halloween retailers started buying these sexy Halloween costumes and we bought them. When retailers realized that they could cash in on this trend, they bought more. Leading to the iconic 2004 Mean Girls quote, Halloween is the one night a year when a girl can dress like a total slut and no other girls can say anything about it. I adore Halloween because it gives people a space to be their sexy selves, especially in our sex negative society where we often think of people dressing up as super sexily as not super accepted. But it isn't all treats for sexy Halloween costumes. One of the words that often comes to mind when talking about how we view people that wear super sexy Halloween costumes is slut shaming. Um, and I used to use the word a lot too when talking about Halloween, but I watched an amazing video by fellow sex blogger, sex YouTuber, Erica Lane, and she talked a little bit about why slut shaming isn't maybe the best word. As you might know, someone can be called a slut for any reason. Teenagers who've never had their first kiss get called sluts for wearing shorts that are too short. Survivors of sexual assault get called sluts. You might get called a slut if you say no thank you when someone asks to go on a date. So while slut shaming is loosely based around sexuality, it's really just another word to put down and control women. And as Erica astutely puts, points out in her video, we don't use the word bitch shaming or any other derogatory term. So when we create a separate category for this idea of slut shaming, which is really just about misogyny, it detracts from that purpose and we can't have a proper conversation. Erica talks about a whole bunch of awesome words you can use instead, like hypersexualization, victim blaming, sexual bullying, which centers away from the person to the bigger problem that's actually happening. So now that we've cleared this up, how do we fight misogyny on Halloween? I actually have a couple ideas. Number one, call people out when they say misogynistic stuff. If you hear friends or friends of friends saying, oh, I can't believe she wore that, just remind them that all people deserve respect no matter what they're wearing. In the same vein, work to make people feel safe if wearing whatever they want at your Halloween parties and events. Don't invite sexual predators to your Halloween parties. This may sound obvious, but if you have a friend who you know tends to get creepy when they drink alcohol, they're not allowed to come to your party just because they're your friend. Talk to them about their problematic behavior. Also learn more about bystander intervention, which is an amazing thing. I will link it in the description. Check in with your friends, check in with them about their rides, their way home. Have your own amazing sex positive Halloween parties and wear nothing or wear lots of things and just have a good time. Beyond sexy costumes, call your friends out if they think it's fun to go in blackface or culturally appropriate a costume. If you don't know why that's not a great thing, I have linked a whole bunch of things in the description below. Also, when we keep talking about this and demand that companies provide different options, they will. What you buy, people will make more of because they want to make more money. Also, don't assume that all of your friends want to dress super sexy and don't make them feel weird if that's not what they want to do. So I hope you enjoyed my video about the history of sexy Halloween and how you can make Halloween less misogynistic and more fun for everybody. Like this video if you like it, comment below how do you plan on making Halloween feminist and safe for your friends and the world. <laughs> Share this video if you want people to start thinking about Halloween like this too. And subscribe if you aren't already 
and donate to me on Patreon. That's all I have to say. Have a lovely day. Capitalism. Capitalism.